So there you go, uh, the bone of contention. Well, to shed some light on what's going on, we have someone who was there as well. Uh, we've got uh, Zaka Bala, who is a petroleum engineer. Thank you for coming on this morning. Uh, thank you, and good morning. Well, we, we had uh, both perspectives from the same minister about what was going on. You were at that uh, forum where he made that first announcement, and you also have heard what he said subsequently. What do you think of all of this? Well, uh, first of all, I would, I would just want to advise uh, that uh, from the way things are going, effective yesterday, you know, we are approaching uh, or heading towards an energy crossroad. And we mustn't allow ourselves to get to that point. Because if we ever allow that and you run into energy crisis, then that means you're likely to have security threats. Because in situations like this, you're likely to see lawlessness. And once there is lawlessness, a country will thro be thrown into a state of a risk. And what are risk? Risk are chances of threat in situations like this, taking advantages of our vulnerabilities and to cause us harms. And if we allow that, we are going to have serious economic harm. So what we need to do now is to just address these issues. Stop ourselves from getting to the crossroad. And it's very, very possible. How did this all happen? I mean, did the minister cause this? Well, you see, when you talk about policy pronouncements, you know, in context like this, first of all, you need to ask yourself, what is a policy in the context of a nation? My understanding is this. Policies are statements that convey the national philosophy of a country and must be seen to be reflected in the political thinking of its leaders. So we're basically trying to talk about policy pronouncement on what? On energy. So what is the philosophy today? And how is it reflected in the political thinking of leaders? You know, if there were to be congruency, we wouldn't have had the National Assembly, right, probably kicking against it. So it simply tells you probably along the line or somehow somewhere, there has been a disjoint in terms of communication. But I think all parties... All stakeholders are talking about the same thing. Yeah, but what's it is joint here? If he says on bundling in that first time, uh, the first report, and then he comes and says, well, it hasn't been unbundled in the real sense of the word, what do we make of that? On a serious note, as far as I'm concerned as a technocrat, you know, unbundling, restructuring, internal cleansing, you, 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 you know, are all technical semantics. The basic thing is this, the concepts have not changed. But you can redesign, you can realign, you can tweak the model. The NNPC model probably needs to be looked into. But like I said, they're basically talking about the same thing. Nobody is happy that we have not implemented the Nigerian Gas Master Plan. Nobody is, is happy that we are suffering from subsidy imports and are suffering from exchange rate differentials. Nobody is happy that as we speak today, the PIB has not been passed into law. I think that, you know, that maybe that's where it's very important. I mean, you say that as a technocrat, those words, you know, it doesn't really make a difference to you. They're semantics. You, you seem they're synonyms of each other. But, you know, for lawyers, for lawmakers, for people who deal with the law, uh, these words are important in the sense that he could be accused of having violated the law or gone beyond his reach as minister. I recall that before the uh, workers down tools, the House of Reps had ordered taken an objection to the unbundling, in quote, or is it restructuring now, of the NNPC. They used the word unbundling. Apparently, he'd used that word before. But in the announcement that he made, uh, while talking about uh, what had happened within the NNPC, he used the word restructuring, perhaps a careful reversal of you know his earlier statements or perhaps understanding the legal implications of what that could mean now he's also tried to clarify that uh, the companies are not standalone companies in the sense that if they were unbundled they will be standalone companies it, does that really does that really matter in the sense that even if the NNPC were unbundled wouldn't we still have the NNPC still overseeing all of these companies would it not matter to me, I mean, the, 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 the bigger body called mm -hmm. NNPC will remain. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was why I said probably is the congruency, you know, the collectivity, the synchronizing of thoughts together mm -hmm. that was lacking. You, you can see it. 
it was very clear that at some point communication was an issue or agreeing and that lack of assemblage is a can be a fundamental problem it destroys corporations it destroys nations because we're just talking about a situation where the president just came from two great countries that have something to do with our natural endowment mm -hmm. the president just came back from Saudi, visited saudi arabia as we speak nigeria is one of the key members of, of OPEC. Saudi Arabia produces more than 10 million barrels per day and refines more than 50% of that. Saudi Arabia is one of the countries that has the greatest refineries in the world. That visit alone to Saudi Arabia must have led to cross fertilization of ideas. And when you come back to Nigeria, something is supposed to happen if you look at our own refineries. The president didn't stop there. He went to Qatar. Nigeria is a member of Gas Exporting Countries Forum, right? And Qatar is the largest LNG exporter. Back home, we are an LNG what? Exporter. We need the gas. Because today, before we unbundle NEPA, everything was predicated on the availability of what? Gas. Mm. And now that you talk about the unbundling, look, looking at the, you know, those two words, you talked about unbundling NEPA. Yes. If the NNPC were unbundled, I mean, if we choose to use that word, can we say it was the same thing that has happened within the PHCN that has also happened, or that happened in NEPA that has also happened within the NNPC? No. NEPA was broken into and privatized or sold. Mm -hmm. NEPA was not commercialized. NEPA was not deregulated, to the best of my understanding. Mm -hmm. NEPA was basically broken and sold what to be managed for, for effectiveness. NNPC... What word do you use for that? Come back. What word do you use for that? For what? Is it... For what happened within NEPA? Well, as far as I'm concerned, NEPA was privatized, technically. And that's why, you, you know, at some levels, you know, at some levels, yes, technical terms are, are important. But in the interest of national unity, looking at the demography and the strata of Nigeria, there is a need sometimes for effective clarification. Well, it, it turns out that uh, there seems to be some sort of misunderstanding out there uh, because the public may think that, uh, I don't know, rightly or wrongly, that maybe members of the union are opposed to, is it the let me use the word, reorganization of the NMPC in order for it to move forward? No, there's no way. Nobody is happy that we cannot meet up with our joint venture cash calls. Not even, the, not even the union? No, no way. Nobody is happy that we are supposed to be the industrial hub for sub-Saharan Africa and the continent of Africa. Nobody is happy that today we are being described as Nigeria being a great country of great people, but bad example. Nobody is happy that with the earnings from oil and gas, the oil and gas as a sector or industry does not constitute up to 10% of our GDP. So what do you think? And it's actually the GDP that we are, need to grow. Some are unhappy about. Is the communication. As far as I'm concerned, because at a point, probably during his last, the, the, the Honorable Minister's last interview, he said probably there was no effective engagement, you know. And that was why people, when we started here, I said we have to do something about the energy crisis before we get to the crossroad. Because if there was an issue with the engagement, in the in, I mean, in the interest of, 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 of the nation, you know, I mean, there will be a need for us to stop at this point. Because when you talk about going on strike with a body like the Nigerian Oil and Gas Nation, it will portend so many things for you in terms of credibility. And if you shut down the, 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 the gas and there is no supply to the thermal stations, what do you think? Yeah, we'll, come back, sorry, we'll, come back, we'll come back to the issue of communication. Uh, let's now go back and see if what has happened is for the good of the country. If you say it's all about communication, we'll come back to communication. Uh, restructuring, reorganization, unbundling, semantics. Correct. We know something has happened. Is it a good thing? Well, long term, if you spell out your intentions, your plans, 
you know, as far as I'm concerned, long term, it's going to be positive for Nigeria. We want to do this because Nigeria has been described as, an op as, as a country that is opaque. Everything about so Nigeria. That sector? Yes, that, se that, that sector of the Nigerian oil, of, of, uh, of the oil and gas industry has been described as being opaque, has been cloudy. You know, before now, we were made to understand that NNPC was not presenting financial statements. And you're talking about a country where we, have, we had an EFCC, we had an Accountant General of the Federation, and we have an Auditor General of the Federation. And if all those things were true, then, and if we had gone ahead,